everybody, and welcome to another episode of Kate Build Stargate Alliance. Depending on which tutorial clicked on first, I am a huge Stargate fan, and we'll get that out of the way now. Um, so I'm going to teach you guys how to build effects from the show. The first one being the Atlantis shield effect. So whenever the city is attacked on Stargate Atlantis, which is this floating city, they raise the shields and the shields go up around the, <laughs> the entire structure and you kind of get this kind of glowy, meshy look um, that's kind of almost a particle effect. So we're going to talk about that. First I'm going to address the geometry that I have in my scene. I'm going to remove the shader. This is from Free3D. I don't have an exact replica of Stargate Atlantis's Atlantis. So I just downloaded something similar. Um, so it's a free FBX. You can get it off of free3d.com. Google Atlantis, you'll find it. So I've imported it into the scene. I've converted it to polygons. I've subdivided it so I got more detail and added some UVs onto it. So either way, they are there. So I have about six different render things that we can do. So I'll turn these all on and you can take a look. We'll let that cook out. So you can kind of see the shield <laughs> kind of rise upwards. So before we dive into that, we'll dive into the materials and also the lighting. I currently have three, two different cameras over here, camera one and camera two. Well, camera three and camera two. Camera two is just getting a close-up view of the shield rising like that. And also another one that's a little bit lower so we can have a little bit more diversity in what we're looking at through the camera. So I've got four lights in the scene. I should only have one, so I'm going to delete that. So I have three lights in the scene. <laughs> I'm using a default Houdini HDRI. Um, light intensity is a 1.1. Rotated it just a little bit. Added a distant light. Everything is normal. Transform is that. I'll enable it in the viewport so you can kind of see where it is. It's very tiny. It's over there. I'll enable another one over here so it's pointed in that direction. Um, all these are basically the same but they're transformed differently. And now let's talk about the materials. Sorry, I like to do things backwards because I do. For Atlantis, because this isn't my model, I just use a default aluminum shader. I haven't added anything special to it. So the alumin aluminum is right here. Clicking on the uh, shader, we've got a base color that's kind of this gooey tone. IOR is cranked up, roughness is turned down, we've got metallic and reflectivity on there, coat roughness, and everything else is pretty normal. Jumping out for the mesh. So the mesh is the actual shield itself that rises up and down through the simulation. And it rises pretty fast. So clicking on here, we've got a glass shader. And the reason I used a glass shader was because um, it just kind of looked better and also you can see things behind it. That's kind of my reasoning. So, got the mesh. Jumping out here, we've got our first layer of particles. So we call them first particles. They've got this nice little glow shader on them. Then we got a wave of second particles, which are these lines coming down. Um, so jumping over here, they share the same shader, which is pretty awesome. We've got the top of the shield, which I'll bring up in a second. Let me find my reference. So here's my reference. You can kind of see it in the show. So you have the top up here. If you were to light this in real life, um, it'd look a little bit different than it does in the show because this was all built with Lightwave 3D, not Houdini, believe it or not. In early 2008, we didn't use Houdini for the show. Very interesting, right? But anyways, skimming through a reference. 
we can see that there's a top of the shield here. So those little orbs in here are the top of the shield. And our particles are coming down like that. We've got a, and the glow, the shader here is sharing the same shader for our glows. And then we don't have any third particles, so I'm gonna delete them. I'm gonna go back to my materials for a second. I'm gonna delete everything I don't need, which is a total of just two shaders. I did a lot of experimentation in this file, so sorry about that. Um, I wanted the look that looked best. I'm going to save before anything else goes wrong. And now we're going to dive inside. So this whole thing is built around the top here. And it was very interesting um, how I chose to build it because it's from a sphere. It's not from a tube, it's from a sphere. So I need to turn off everything else before I get started. Otherwise it's gonna be very weird. So I'm keeping the city on just so I can, you guys can see per scale what the sphere is. So if I ghost this and go down to here, you can kind of see that it encompasses the base of the city, not really the stands. So I've added a clip here. And what this clip is doing is just clipping the bottom. So the shield itself is resting somewhat on the city like that. It is clipping just a little bit right there, but it's not my model. <laughs> um, as we say in the industry. No, we don't really say that, sorry. Um, I've subdivided it, so it's a depth of three. And then I've added it here, which is an out geometry. So if we skim through here, nothing really happens. We haven't animated yet. And now I've colored it. So it's colored black for now, just so I can see what's going on. And now you see a clip. And this clip is this movement for our shield going upwards like that. So it starts at zero and then it goes up and it's clipping all primitives below the plane. So we get that kind of effect. I then add an attribute delete, a CD. And the reason I added the color was just for visualization purposes so I could see what was um, not moving before the clip and how everything looked while I was animating the clip. It's really up to you whether or not you wanna keep it. So after this attribute delete, we are going to jump down. So over here, we want to output our, our kind of shield. So we subdivided it just a little bit more, added a mountain, so it's kind of got this displacement to it. And the mountain is actually moving, so we've got some kind of whirly thing going on. Um, the reason I did that is that when it's rendering, I wanted kind of the reflections off the shield to shimmer just a little bit. So I thought, you know, animating the mesh in a way that's plus its upwards movement would help that. So that's kind of what I did. And then added an attribute bop because I wanted to play with the alpha channels of this. I also want to play with the color, if that makes any sense. So this is going out to an alpha and I'll explain what I did. And so you can see some kind of variations in color across it or visibility. So we go up here, I've added, added an anti-alias noise and some ripples. So we get some ripples right there, fitted them to one and pumped them into a multiply. I then connected a hex tile to my ID, added a fit and also multiplied that over here. I've added a random value down here and I've plugged the multiply into the CD and then I've also added this random value in the multiply to the alpha. So I hope that makes sense. And if this all works, you should have a alpha value over here. And this is a bind export, if you're wondering what that is. So then we've added an out mesh and this is going out to our main mesh that we saw earlier. So jumping over here, I then colored this black. So I've added an attribute transfer over here. And what this is doing is animating the color once again. So if we skim through here, you should see something interesting start to happen where you see this kind of black rim form like that. And basically what this is doing, it's taking a sphere, which is down here, coloring it red and transferring its values under here. So because that sphere is still at the bottom, any of part of our bottom little shield is going to turn red. 
And I've animated those values over time, so I can grab what I like from those colors. Then deleted everything but the red. So whatever is black will fade to black, I guess, if you want to call it that. Um, and it's deleting by expression. I've then added a null over here. Oh, that's connecting to my attribute transfer, and we'll get to that later, but it's called outcd transfer. Then add in a mountain, so it's playing with the pieces on the top here that are changing over time. Subdivided it. Diving in, you can see it start to change. Deleted the color. Added some more noise, which is color values once again and you can kind of see blacky points start to form on there and I've then scattered some points and this is our particle emitter so jumping over here I have another attribute transfer which is transferring our CD and this is grabbing from our out CD transfer, which is over here. So it's just reapplying those values. And it was cleaner for me to do it this way because I didn't want a thousand like spheres all over this place while making the shield and just connecting everything seemed a lot easier. I've then deleted what I don't need, which is the same delete as you saw over here. And it's just deleting everything but the black. Then added a VBD from particles, which is generating from the top. Reshape SDF, converted this, so you can get some kind of lippage hanging down. Added a mountain, and this is mountain is really up to you. If you wanted a clean edge, you could do that, or if you want a dirty edge, you can add the mountain. And you can play with the height too, and completely up to you. Then smooth this out, added a normal, and then we have our shield top, which is pretty simple. Now to our particles. Now on to our particles. So our particles are grabbing from our emitter right here. And we're just picking up all those particles and we're deleting half of them. So we've got a, or just over half. We are deleting points over a delete by range. So we're just selecting random points then time shifting them. So I'm just adding a time shift so I don't get too much shooters. I just added that to be safe. I encountered some issues when I was playing with the setup. And then I copied a bunch of lines to them. So you can see these lines move up and they're jittering just a little bit because the points are disappearing over time. And then added a pop net. And you can see these, if we play this back, kind of the strands start to disappear over time like that. It's pretty simple. And if we go inside, it is just as simple as it looks. I've added a gravity. And I've merged a pop wins, which is looking like this, and with a SOP solver. We'll go to the source input before we get to the SOP solver. Uh, so the life expectancy is 0 0.02, life variance is a 0 0.4, and it's selecting from all geometry. You could also do all points if you felt like it as well. Um, diving inside this one, I've just chosen the top geometry and added a resample to it. And that's pretty much it. Let me just check something. Going to our solver, everything is the same. Pop object, everything is the same. This is really optional at this point. Going over here, I've once again transferred our color to our lovely strands over here. So it's grabbing color from the top of our dome. And the reason I'm doing this is that you can still see these lines up here and we just want these wispy, wispy lines coming down and generating from the top of our dome. So what this color transfer is doing is just deleting all those extra lines. Then I deleted this with a delete on points, delete by expression. And then I've deleted my attributes here, minus my P scale and my velocity. And then merged it down here with another set of particles. So what these particles are as well, are just points generated from those particles. 
and I'll show you in a second. So going in here, I'm going to the simulation, it starts at one, diving inside. We can go to our points, it's showing that it's generating from points. Constant birth rate is something crazy high. Um, choose whatever number you feel is necessary and adjust to the life expectancy. Then I've got a pop steer coercion on them so they stick together as they fall. Um, bindings, everything else here is the same. Sop solver, same. Pop object, all good to go. Then I've deleted the same attributes. And I've gone down here and I've randomized these. So I've deleted. I've, I've made the min value crazy, crazy small and the max value a little bit small, 0 0.032 and the attribute name P scale. And these are going out to our secondary particles and we'll let that export itself. So this is once again over here grabbing from our trusty particle emitter. We have a pop net, which is pulling in two, one of two things. So I'm going to delete what we don't need and also reorganize the scene because it looks like I was lazy. I'm also going to save. So I'm jumping over here to the pop net. I'll play it back so you can get a better idea of what they're doing. It's just a generic kind of sim where the particles itself are being generated across the sphere. So this is bringing in points, something crazy high again. The constant activation is on always, so I'm just going to delete channels from there. Um, life expectancy is adjusted to something crazy small. Life variance is up just a little bit. Then we've got a pop steer align. Pop a track so they stay together just a little bit. And the goal is this build out geometry. So what this is getting attracted to is our original geometry up here. So it stays to the surface. Um, we've got a pop solver that's got some collision behavior on it, which is telling the particles to stick when they come into contact with something. And we're using the object transform for this one. And then once over here, I've got brought in my shield out geometry, so our original circle, and that we talked about for the pop attract. And then we've also the OBJ path to where it's located in the scene so you can display the geometry it's getting brought in. I've then added a static solver and a merge node. I've then added a wind force with a negative of 4 and a scale force of 23. Then I've gone down here and told it to delete everything but the stream source first input. Then add an attribute delete, so it's deleting everything but the velocity of the particles, which I need for the render. So it should look like that. Randomize the P scale just a little bit, so if it's something crazy low and something reasonably high. Then go into my attribute transfer, turned off my visualizer, and you can see that I'm also, once again, transferring that red color onto my particles, so I can delete where I want it to be and then deleted particles over a, an expression. And then I'm an attribute delete, delete the color, and then added my out particles. And all of these are corresponding to the top. So you can see what we have here. So if you turn on mesh, go into our mesh, particles, go into the particles, Render second particle. All of these should sim out pretty fast, so you shouldn't really need a file cache. Then we've got out second particles and the shield pop itself, which is that beautiful kind of mesh at the top. And that's pretty much it for the shield effect for Stargate Atlantis, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!